Okay, this is the walk around and start up of the first year 1993 CBR 900RR. When this bike was introduced in 93, it only weighed six or seven pounds more than the CBR 600RR. And so it was a light, quick handling bike. And even though some of the leader bikes of the same year or two had a little more horsepower this was felt to be the best all-around bike because of its lightness ease of handling and uh, those things made up for you know 10 less horsepower Honda introduced this uh, with what they called perforated uh, fairing technology I want to point out something right now though before I go any further is if you look at the uh, fluorescent red sticker above the right headlight you see how it's kind of orange and that's because the Sun in the sky right now in January is really low and so if I put my if I put that in the shade you can see how it returns to you know the red so if you everything every detail on this bike is the bright red okay so if you see it an orange color that's just the Sun kind of washing it out but they introduced this with the perforated technology up on the top part of the fairing and on the lower part of the fairing. And it sure looks cool, but they felt that with the air going through the fairing, there'd be less resistance and the bike would turn quicker into the corners. And you had dual headlights. A lot of people would put like a yellow one in one and the other one, the, you know, uh, just like a, a 100 watt halogen. Nowadays, though, you can upgrade these to LEDs and have about three times the brightness at about 15% of the draw. So that even if you wanted to ride the bike around, you'd be running full heated gear and you're not going to be overwhelming the stator. Um, also, something you just don't see on these bikes today, especially... And you can see here if I can get the sun out of the lens. 5,975 miles. 5,975 original miles. And you can also see on the tack how the red line is bright red orange. So there's no sun fading. Um, I did buy this bike from the original owner. And he was quite fastidious uh, about it. Um, to the point, this is what I was mentioning earlier. The bike has the stock exhaust can on it, which almost everybody that bought one of these 93 CBR 900 RRs and later on, they'd take that off and throw it in the garbage can and put something else on that was louder, uh, better airflow. They wanted to try and get some more horsepower. But just seeing this with 5,900 miles and the stock can is pretty amazing. Um, and the stickers are all here and here so I'm not necessarily doing this in any order but just giving you a feel for the bike I'd also point out the condition of the handlebar control instruments they're just again no sun fading very nice very clean um, You'll see on the left side here, you see the perforated air technology again and the lower fairing. You'll note that on the engine cases, that it hasn't been down sliding across the pavement. Here again, and we'll go down and you can see that there's no damage to the case or the fairing. Uh, foot pegs, pretty much like brand new. So. Look in the ad text, because I haven't reviewed my title yet, but the bike's been titled and licensed in my name here in Oregon for quite some time. Um, although I did have the bike for, I think, about three years since I bought it out of state before I decided to give Oregon any money. Because when I first got it, I put it in the museum collection. And then after a few years, I said, well, heck, I'm going to put some tires on it and run it for a season and put a few hundred miles on it. But when I titled and licensed it, because it was over 25 years old and of special interest, 
Honda has a special interest plate that is available for uh, motorcycles 25 years and older that have, as they say, a special interest. So you buy that plate one time, and it's like a vintage plate in many states where it's good forever without having to renew it. Now if the buyer of this bike is an Oregon resident, I will let the plate go with the bike. If it's an out-of-state buyer, then I'll keep the plate and just put it on one of my other bikes because it won't be of any use to you in a different state. But we'll just do a quick walk around of all the body. Just check out the plastic, the condition of this. This thing has only been outside when it's being used. And this, was, they had, this is where they got the weight savings back in 93 was this alloy frame. And down here before, but we'll do the whole side panel. And as I said, find any pictures or the video where what you're looking at right now is a bright red and that's the correct color. But the sun is uh, like about, you know, five o'clock or seven o'clock on a clock dial. It's so low that it just washes everything out. See, now it has a, we pulled out of the, we did several things, pulled it out of the storage, and we did an oil and filter change, or put a new battery in it first, then did an oil and filter change, and then um, flushed the front and the rear brakes. They were good, but just flushed them anyway. And removed the um, treated storage gas that was in the tank, and filled the bike with, or not filled it, we did about halfway on the gas tank, so you can see inside here when they do the pictures. Um, filled it with non-ethanol premium, and then we um, put the fuel pet cock on reserve, uh, pulled the choke on, let it set for a few minutes, hit the starter, and it was like, <laughs> That's what I love about Hondas. If you put them to bed right, they're just so much fun to bring back into operation later. A um, couple things is, I'd also point out the seats are flawless. No damage anywhere on them. And to get underneath the operator seat where the battery is, it's best just to get a 12 gauge or a 10 gauge or 10 millimeter T-handle or a long extension and then you just undo these two bolts and you can pull the seat off and have access to all that with the rear seat you use the key and you have access and you have a actually a large trunk you can put flat repair extra set of gloves maybe a light windbreaker and you have your helmet lock right here and cargo straps if you wanted to carry cargo on it. Um, and the bike does come with the Honda toolkit, which I will say I have not opened because Honda, for whatever reason, packs those tools in so tight in a smaller than they should use bag that if you don't pay attention when you take them out and put them back in the same order, you'll be stretching and tearing the bag. And so I just use my shop tools. It also comes with the, let's see if I get the, out of the sunlight here. It comes with the owner's manual, 93 CBR 900. And that closes down like that. It's getting kind of cold now. So you can see here, I'm getting a little condensation from the fog and coolness coming in. I'm going to do a startup now. Turn the key on, you see the lights, that choke, and hit the starter. That's pretty much how it started up after we brought it out of the mothball, maybe half a second more of a starter wine. The bike has three sets of keys. I had one when I bought the bike, I had two extra ones made. And I have like fuel hose over the end of the keys so they're not marring, you know, this area of the triple clamp. So there's your choke. Now it's off. Put it warm up a little bit. So 
but we can do a headlight test. There's high beams, or excuse me, low beams, high beams. Dual tail light. And this is really cool. With the dual tail lights, not only do you have twice the brightness, but if one burns out, you're not going to get rear-ended by somebody because you still have a backup. And then there's the brake light and front brake light. We'll do the front right turn signal, rear right turn signal. Left turn signal, front, right turn signal, and, and so when you turn the turn signal, you just go like that, and then when you're done, just push it straight in, it turns it off. You can see the high beam works, the turn signal light is already done. But, um, horn. Could have been louder, considering how fast the bike was, but um, notice on the ends, you know, there's no damage showing or indicating that it went down. But this is a superb specimen with only 5,900 miles on it. All OEM, except for the tires and owner's manual and toolkit. So, do, do some research on this. These bikes have become very collectible because they were the first year of Honda sport bikes that really changed the world, you know, and rocked, even though it was 900 cc's, it rocked the 1,000cc leader class bikes because of its lightness, somewhat short wheelbase, a 16 inch front wheel instead of a 17, and I'll tell you what, when you ride these, you know, compared to, you know, a modern 2020 bike that has traction control and ABS and sensors that enlarge the application of the ABS brakes when you're leaned over in the corner, and when you ride this, it's all you, dude. I mean, you know, you got to gas, brake it, and handle it. It's all yourself, and gives you a lot more respect for a motorcycle because it's not idiot-proof by any means. So please read uh, all of the additional text in, in the uh, ad. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I've taken probably three times as many pictures as uh, eBay lets me put up. So if you want to see pictures of something um, that I don't have on the eBay ad, then you know, I can even feel free to ask. So that's it. Happy bidding.